Hey everyone, in this video we're going to set up the backend for our JSON, JSON web token authentication. So right now by default Django doesn't have it set up to handle any sort of tokens with refresh and access tokens and so we need to set that up by installing a separate package and putting a few things to our URLs and our settings to get this kind of set up and ready to go. Um, and then in the next couple of videos, we'll actually build the front end logic to handling the login, logout, and register um, functions for application. But this will be a quick video just kind of setting our backend up so we actually have the tokens available for our front end. So there is a good blog post about this pull over here. Um, you can find it if you just search, you know, JWT DRF, you should find it here. How to use JSON web token authentication with Django REST framework. And it kind of goes through kind of how to set this up. It gives you a little intro on uh, what these JSON web tokens are, what they, what they consist of, and how to use this to authenticate users. And so this will be in the description below. And we're going to go through some of this in this video. Uh, but there's more in this that we won't talk about and that link will be in the description if you want to learn more about this. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So looking at this, the first thing we do is install this library. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, go to my terminal where I already have my server running. I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that right in there. And it's just Django REST framework underscore simple JWT. We'll install that there. I'll rerun my server. And then we need to go ahead and add this REST framework equals and its default authentication classes. Looking at our project here, we do not have any REST framework settings in here yet. Or yes, we do. We do have some, we already have some settings right here actually. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and just grab just this list and this default authentication classes uh, dictionary key here. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We want to go ahead and paste that inside of this. So I'll put it, you can put it anywhere, I'll put it here at the top, just like that. And then I'll fix this indent right here. And that sets up our REST framework JWT as an authentication class. So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll come back over here. And then we need to go ahead and update our URLs.py. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what we need to do is go ahead and import our JWT views. And this will be from rest underscore framework dot uh, underscore simple JWT import views as JWT underscore views. And then we can go ahead and add two routes to our URL patterns. So back on my browser here, I'll grab these two routes. And once again, this is in the description below, so you don't have to write all this in by scratch. You'll be there so you can copy as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that right down here. We shouldn't need this API auth anymore. So I'll go ahead and comment that out for now. But now we should be able to authenticate users using this token route and this API token refresh. And I'll go over that here in a second. But before I do that, Let's go ahead and jump into the API in our browser and take a look at this. So here at the API root, we have our API routes we already created. So looking at this API here, if we click on something like users, for example, you'll see we get this error saying authentication credentials were not provided. And that's because if we look at our views, inside of our reviews folder, go to our views, the user view set, is the permissions on that is set to is authenticated. So we have to be logged in to be able to do anything to this. But you'll notice now that we took away our API auth stuff, we can no longer have a way to log in here. So what we need to do instead is this won't work for authenticated views using the tokens. What we can do though, is we can use something like Insomnia, which I have here, or something like Postman or any sort of other sort of API client to make these requests. So let's go ahead and jump into Insomnia and see how we can make this work with our new token authentication. So I'm gonna use Insomnia, but you could use Postman too. And it'll just look a little different, but you could probably figure it out from this video as well. But what we wanna do is we wanna to go to HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost 8000 slash users. We send that request, we will receive the same error right here, saying authentication credentials that were not provided. Let's, so what we can do is we can go into our headers. So in Insomnia, it's right here under header. 
and we can add an authorization header. And our authorization header will need to have our token, but we don't have that token yet. So what we can do, looking at our URLs, we can go to this route right here, API slash token. So I'll open up a new request here, and this needs to be a post request. So make sure you choose a post request, and we'll go to HTTP local host port 8000 slash API slash, uh, what was the, uh, the route again? It was API slash token. And make sure you have that chilling slash like that. And what we can do is we can go over to the body tab. We can add a JSON body and we can pass in a user here. So in my case, I have a user already. Um, their username is admin. Make sure we use double quotes here because this is JSON. And their password is just password. So I can pass this data in here. If you do not have a user already, what you can do is you can open up your server, you can stop the server, and you can run python3 manage.py create super user, and that will give you a prompt to create a user. And then those credentials you can use in this API call. Make sure we're on the server again. And so what we do here now is now we have this admin and password set. We need to go over to our headers and make sure we have content type set to application slash JSON. We'll send that. And now we should receive a refresh token and an access token. And the next few videos, I'll go over more about what these are and how to use them. But the workflow we'll need to do is use this access token to authenticate the user. After five minutes, this token will become invalid and we'll need to make another request to this refresh token. I'll get to this refresh token in a minute, but first let's go ahead and just do that first part and use this access token to validate the user. So I'll copy this token. I'll come back to my user's uh, get request that failed with the authentication credentials were not provided. And what we can do is add this header, authorization being the key, and the value being bearer, space, and then the token. Now I send that request. And now we get a 200 response and we get our users back. Now, if I wait long enough, eventually this would fail after five minutes. And that's because this token, this access token expires after five minutes. So to handle using the application longer than five minutes, what we have here is this refresh token. This refresh token by default is, uh, is available for 24 hours or 24 hours. Yes. And so what we can do is if this access token is invalid, we can use this refresh token to get a new access token. So the workflow we'll need to follow in the upcoming videos to make this work is we'll need to check the access token. If it's invalid, we'll need to take this refresh token we get from this API token response. So both of these will be saved somewhere after we make this, this, this uh, request. We we'll need to take this refresh token and then we need to go to HTTP local hosts 8000 slash API slash token slash refresh. And this is the same route that we added right here, API slash token slash refresh. And what we can do here is we can go into our headers and first add one header, which is application, uh, sorry, content type, and set that equal to application slash JSON. And this is, we need this every single time we do this post request with a, uh, JSON body. So make sure we had that there. And then in our JSON body, we'll need to make sure you select this here and Postman. It might be a little different. What we need to do inside of here is set a field being refresh and set this equal to the refresh token. Now we send that. Um, oh, I forgot a trailing slash on the post request. Make sure these, re these routes need to have a trailing slash. Make sure that's there. But we'll send this, and then if this this refresh token is valid, we will receive a new access token. Now I can take this access token, copy this, and go to my users, my get request here, go to the headers, and I can replace all of this with a new token. So bearer, space, the new token, send that, and we still get a 200 response. And so that is how this works. So if you're able to get a token here, or get the two tokens here, I should say, the access and the refresh, and you're able to get a new access token by going to this API token refresh route, then you have everything set up and ready to go. We'll do all of this in the JavaScript, obviously, in the next few videos, but we need to get the setup first. So with that done, 
this should all be set up and ready to go. And that's where we'll stop for today with this video. It was just a quick one to get this ready to go. The next few will be a little complicated. So if this didn't make sense, I'll go over all this again when we actually build this in the front end. But for now, just make sure that you have both the ability to get an access token and the access and refresh token at these two routes. And you can test it at this user's route if you want to by passing an authorization, bare space, and then the current access token. So that is it for today. The links for all this code will be in the description below. Links to resources on these tokens if you want to read more on them and how they work. Uh, that will be available there as well. Um, but that is it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.